Hey, grace and peace, everybody. Um, Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you which also was in Christ Jesus. We hear that a lot and I want to talk for a few moments on the subject of Christ consciousness. And what does Christ consciousness mean? We hear a lot of Christian terminology floating around that's masked or garbed in ancient, um, in the ancient esoteric knowledge. Um, some people, you will find it in new, what we call the New Age movement, Hinduism, speaking about Christ consciousness. I spoke a little bit in my other video, Jesus Masonry in Your Third Eye. I gave a little bit of history. You can check that video out on the esoteric. And I spoke about Levi Dowling and um, the 18 missing years of Jesus. A lot of people like to speak about that. And he, and he taught in his book, it's basically an extended version of the Gospel of Matthew. But instead of 28 verses, it's like 124 verses. And it goes on to tell how John the Baptist's parents and Jesus' parents took them to Egypt and they um, trained in the mysteries. They trained in ancient esoteric knowledge and that there was a high degree that was always in the lodge of ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet in the mystery schools. It would be the equivalent to the university um, and many people believe that Freemasonry, modern secret societies, and Rosicrucian, R Rosicrucianism came down from that. And they taught that there was a high degree in there, and that degree was a God degree, or it was a Christ consciousness degree, and other... And, and other Greek philosophers, other wise men from the East all over came and they studied and they were initiated, but no one ever reached a high degree. And they said, the story goes on to say that once Jesus got there, that he was initiated and he received a high degree. He later traveled to India and we see that in the writings of Helen Blavatsky also. Um, that Jesus went to India and he traveled all over the place. And then ultimately he came back to Judea, to his people, and he started to teach his people. And that's where the gospel stories pick up. But it's very interesting that we don't have any history on that whatsoever. A lot of people say, well, they'll, they'll quote certain scriptures like I just quote Philippians 2 and 5. But if you look at it within its context, you cannot, you have to begin to understand the occult and people in esoteric movements, they attempt to, uh, they attempt to separate Jesus from Christ. Everybody has a Christ consciousness. It got real popular here in the States with um, Deeprock and Oprah Winfrey brought him on and you'll hear Oprah speaking about Christ consciousness. But they use a lot of terminology that's Christian or that comes from the Bible, but it doesn't mean the same thing. As Bible-believing Christians, we don't separate Jesus from Christ. We know Christ means anointed, the Messiah, or whatever, an anointed one. And we don't separate the two. A lot of people want to claim today that they have Christ consciousness or God consciousness. One um, internet um, site described it as Christ consciousness being your highest intellectual and emotional state. And everybody can receive Christ consciousness. And that's part of the older doctrine that I spoke about in my previous video, Jesus Masonry and your third eye. When you get to that point where your pineal gland is um, decalcified and you're in touch with being spirit beings or what they call the white brotherhood or various ascended masters. That's what they teach. Jesus is just one of many other ascended masters and you can go into the spirit realm if your pineal gland is decalcified and you can begin to see spirits and commune with spirits and down throughout the years a lot of people from John D to Alistair Crowley to um, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard they were all in, in, involved in the occult or speaking to spirit beings um Another interesting book that speaks about the brotherhood of the snake and that stuff is on Cooper's book, Behold a Pale Horse. In that second chapter, he speaks about secret societies and how that Christ consciousness has always been around and it has later on become part of what was known as Gnostic Christianity or like Annie Bissett, esoteric Christianity. But that's not what we believe. We see Gerald Massey back in the 1800s, he attempted, he wrote 
wrote a book, The Historical Jesus and the Mystical Christ. We recently see it with um, Raza Oslin and Richard Carrier and different people and Richard M. Price that's bringing up certain things that this was an ancient old tradition, but that's not what scriptures teach us. And we have to understand what scriptures teach us and what came down from the church fathers or as opposed to what has been an ancient esoteric or occultic belief that has always been underground from back in the mysteries in Babylon and back in the mysteries in Egypt and back with Nimrod. And I'm going to begin to trace that all the way back to the um, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Kabbalah and Haram Abif and the building of Solomon's temple. I spoke a little bit in another video about natural revelation and what we call revelation from the Most High, a spiritual revelation from God. Um, Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? He, didn't, he wasn't going through a crisis, emotional crisis or anything. And Peter said that thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So there's a revelation from the most high God, but at the same time, the scripture says that the heavens declare the glory of God. So man, ancient man can look around and modern man can look around and observe the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets and animals. And we believe that there's a natural revelation. There's a limited something that you can understand that the world has order and I fit somewhere in this order and there has to be a creator that created all of this stuff and that's what we call natural revelation but then it's also what we call spiritual revelation that comes from the most high God and we see I, I begin to see some things that's sneaking in the Christian church and a lot of people start wanting to talk modern and we hear Oprah saying stuff and we read a lot of positive self-help books moving your higher self and your Christ consciousness when in all actuality scriptures never separate Jesus from Christ, from who he is, from his anointing or from his title. His last name wasn't Christ, his um name was Jesus, but his last name wasn't Christ. A lot of people, it's amazing how they don't even know that, but Christ was actually his title. And, and when it comes down to it, he's the only one that held that tire, title as the redeemer of Israel and all mankind when it comes down to it. So I'm going to do a little further in the study. We're working, we're trying to get things set up here. I'm working on the PowerPoint. We got the screen and all of that stuff. I got to get some wires and figure some stuff out. But we're going to do some more in-depth teaching. But I'm trying to drop a few videos here and there on the subject because I get so many people that question me on the subject. Christ consciousness, it sounds like it's in the Bible, but it's actually, uh, it's actually a, another gospel. It's actually something different, and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all, and we'll explain more in part three. But check out my other video, Jesus Masonry in the Third Eye. Thanks for watching.